Hello there and welcome back to some more Forza Top Gear Laps. Today oh, we are taking a look at something a little bit different. So recently in Forza Motorsport Sport 7 there was an update that got rid of this feature called car crates. They were like prize crates, however instead of pulling driver gear and badges and mods out of them, you'd actually pull a car. And well, before they got taken down I bought uh, quite a few of these prize crates, 26 I believe it was. And well, I've pulled 8 cars out of them, and well, the 8 cars are here today. We start with the 2007 Shelby GT500, 500 horsepower, 480 foot pounds torque, 3,896 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful car here today, and the heaviest car here today. Now, I should stress, I bought 26 of these, and obviously I'm not using cars that I've already used, because I've already used a load of cars for this track, and I did pull quite a few duplicates, and also anything that I had sort of left over. These are basically the first 8 that I pulled out, so... Uh, there you go. Anyways, the GT500. This is actually my favourite model of the Ford Mustang. I think this thing looks absolutely fantastic. It's my favourite looking of all the Mustangs. I love the noise. Just something about the 2007. It's sort of before the Mustangs came a little bit too bulbous and yeah, they got really big and so on. This is just sort of a really nice sleek profile, which is really nice. It looks really good. If you ask me, it also drives pretty good too as well. Uh, yeah, it's a really solid, good car to drive. It is heavy feeling. There's no way you're getting around the fact that this thing weighs almost 4,000 pounds and it is, of course, a muscle car. But it's actually pretty solid. It uh, drives very similar to the V8 M3, but I'd actually say this drives a little bit better than that does. It's a little bit more my style. It also has a really good gearbox as well, which is uh, something pretty good. Anyways, next coming out of the prize crates, we are going to get a 1971 AMC Javelin AMX, 330 horsepower, 430 foot-pounds up, 3,445 pounds of weight, a big old muscle car. We've actually got quite a few muscle cars here today because I haven't used a lot of muscle cars around this track yet. And we start, oh, well, the first classic one is actually a really interesting one, sort of an oddball choice, the Javelin, a car which you don't really see bounced around a lot in the game, uh, which is a bit of a shame. I actually really do quite like the Javelin. It's a pretty interesting looking car. It's not my favorite looking of all the muscle cars, but it is an AMC and I do love AMC. American Motors is uh, quite a fascinating organization to go into. Of course, we've already had the Pacer go around. Uh, so now we've sort of got AMC's serious hard muscle car to go around the track. As far as this one goes to drive, it is very much an old muscle car. There's no mistaking the handling of this for anything more modern. Some muscle cars will handle like sports cars. This is not one of them. It handles like an old muscle car. It's also got some really odd gear ratios. First gear is really long, and then second and third are really short. It's very much set up to be, I guess it's almost like a race car gearbox. Like it's literally built for drag racing. That's what most of these sort of muscle cars are. But yeah, this one, uh, excessively so, really does feel like it was built for sort of more muscle car racing and so on and so forth. Yeah, handling, not its strong suit. The Javelin though, if you want something a little bit interesting as far as muscle cars go, uh, the Javelin is certainly a bit of an oddball choice. Next up out of our car crates, we're going to get a slow car, the 1975 Fiat X1961 horsepower, 67 foot pan torque, 2210 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful car here today and the least talky car here today. It is, yeah, well, honestly, it's pretty much on the borderline of last week's episode where we looked at the slowest car here in Forza Motorsport 7. This one uh, probably could have made that list. Yeah, the X19, not a quick car. I do quite like the X19 though. It's uh, essentially, I guess, if Fiat made an MR2 uh, several years before Toyota did without any real power or anything like that. Yeah, it's sort of designed as sort of a fun little mid-engined economy sports car, I guess is the best way to describe it. And I do like it, it's got quite a bit of charm to it. There's also uh, some pretty major things you can do to this thing. Uh, Upgrade-wise, you can really turn this thing into a massive pocket rocket if you want to, because it is extremely tiny. Um, it's a bit interesting that it's not actually the lightest car here today. It's certainly one of them, it really is not far off the lightest, but uh, yeah, it isn't actually the lightest, so power to weight ratio wise, this might be the worst car here today. In fact, yeah, it, it definitely is the worst car power to weight ratio wise. It's slow, it's it's decent. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, the tires grip, it goes around corners. It's fun to an extent. The problem is, uh, you know, the Subaru 360 that we had last time around, huge amount of fun because of all the body roll and stuff. 
this just isn't power enough, uh, powerful enough to really generate any fun out of it. The 360 was sort of weird in that that was fun, but this, uh, it just doesn't really generate enough power. If you sort of chucked an extra 30, 40 horsepower at this thing, I can imagine this thing would be an absolute hoot to drive, or if you even drove it around a smaller track. But around Top Gear, yeah, the X19 is a little bit on the slow side, unfortunately. Next up, we are going to be getting a Porsche, the 1982 Porsche 911 Turbo 3.3, 296 horsepower, 304 foot pound torque, 2,866 pounds of weight. Of course, this is the classic Widowmaker Porsche, uh, where the turbo basically would kick in halfway around a corner, and then you'd be thrown into a bush, and that's indeed how many people ended up in the 80s. Uh, but, well, I have the foresight of car control in this game, so that is good. Yeah, uh, the 911 Turbo, not really a huge fan of the Porsche 911s, to be honest with you, and this one of this generation doesn't really do a whole lot for me, I don't think it looks particularly good, uh, it's sort of still very much in the Beetle phase of 911s, as much as that might anger someone. Uh, personally, I do prefer sort of the cars that would come after this, the 964 and finally the 993, which is actually my favourite of the Porsche 911s, the last of the air-cooled Porsche 911s there. As far as this one goes to drive, well, it drives like your typical 911. It is very fast, it, very fast, it, it's hugely quick. However, it does come with some of the Porsche caveats, for example, the engine is in the rear, and it's rear-wheel drive, so there's not a lot of weight over the front, so as a result, as you can sort of see it coming down there, front end likes to lift up a little bit. Um, it can actually take some incredible corner speed, but the adverse effect to that is the front end will lift up, which is extremely terrifying, so yes, you can drive this car fast, however, the front end will start lifting, which is absolutely terrifying, although not quite as terrifying as the yellow bird used to be in previous games. Next up, we have the 1991 Honda CRX SIR, 158 horsepower, 112 foot-pound torque, 2,161 pounds of weight. This is two of, oh, this is the first of the two front-wheel drive cars that we have here today. And yeah, the CRX, a car which many people like. I do quite like the CRX, actually. It's basically a Honda Civic in sort of a sportier coupe body, I guess you could say. Um, it's an interesting car, certainly. Uh, interesting thing in this game is there's actually two CRXs. This is the 91. There's also the 84 Mugen, which actually gets a little bit more love. I actually do think that car looks a lot cooler than this one does, even if it isn't quite as powerful as the CRX, which is a bit of a shame because this car's sort of been dropped by the wayside a little bit. Which is a bit of a shame because the CRX is usually a pretty good car. As far as it goes in this game though, I'm a little bit disappointed. When I drove this in Forza Motorsport 6, I believe it was, this thing was incredible, really good handling car. Now it's a little bit livelier in the rear end. The rear end does like to come out in this thing, you can probably get some lift off oversteer out of this car quite easily. And that's not really what I like in my front wheel drive cars. Yeah, it's a little bit of a handful to drive this one, which is a bit of a shame. Um, that being said though, I mean, it's decent enough, you can probably get decent enough stats out of it, you can probably make it a good enough race car if you tried hard enough, but for me personally, as far as I like to drive my front wheel drive cars, it's just not quite as good as personally I would like. So, as we go to pull another car from the crates, we are going to get the... It's another muscle car. It's the 1970 Buick GSX, another oddball choice as far as muscle cars go. 360 horsepower, 510 foot-pound torque, 3,874 pounds of weight. This is the torquiest car here today, and it is by far and away the largest car here today. This thing is humongous. Compared to sort of the Top Gear track, this, uh, yeah, it really does dwarf it. I do like the GSX, it's a fantastic looking car. Uh, it's sort of in this yellow and black paint job really sets it off. It is phenomenal to look at. Don't know a whole lot about it, not really, I don't know much about Buick in general, they're not really a manufacturer I'm well aware of being a UK resident, not a US resident, but uh, yeah, it is a fantastic looking car and stats are pretty good as far as it goes. This is a proper muscle car and to drive, well, it's properly American. It is boat-like. It's very, very floaty. It's very huge, which is a bit of an issue on a track sort of as tight as this. Uh, the gearbox might be an issue on longer tracks, sort of it's a free speed setup where it basically looks like it's going to max out about 110 miles an hour, but around a track like this, the gears are sort of so... 
I wouldn't say they're short, they're just sort of perfectly set up for this. Basically, when you're coming down this back straight here, you're maxing it out in third gear, which isn't too much of an issue. Uh, it actually means the car is, yeah, pretty well geared for this, but be aware on longer tracks, you might have some issues with the GSX. You might have issues with the GSX and anyway, because it's quite uncontrollable, but with some upgrades, I'm sure it'd be a pretty good car. Next up, uh, oh, oh dear. Well, cover your ears, kids. It's the 2009 Vauxhall Corsa VXR, 189 horsepower, 192 foot-pound torque, 2,652 pounds of weight. It is the worst sounding car in the game, to be quite honest with you. It's a horrific sounding thing. Yeah, not much of a fan of the Corsa, if you couldn't tell. Of course, we did have the 2016 one around very recently, actually, which is... Uh, gonna be an interesting comparison between this car and that car because I actually ended up quite liking the 2016 in the way that it drives Although as you can probably see on your screens right now I might have a slightly different opinion when it comes to uh, the Corsa uh, the sort of 2009 Corsa Yeah, this one it's pretty bad. It's the new car sort of has quite good control It has a little bit of uh, slip from the front wheels as sort of you expect but the actual sort of mechanical grip and so on uh, it can carry the corner speed quite well, it's just a nice car to drive, quite an easy car to drive. This one, it's not easy. It loves slipping the front wheels. I don't know if this thing had any form of limited slip differential from the factory, but it, honest to god, feels like it really does not, or at least this version didn't. Um, it has quite a bit of understeer, moderate amounts of understeer. Yeah, sort of moderate amounts of understeer combined with a crappy diff basically means this car is... Uh, not very good to drive. I find it hard to recommend the 09 Corsa. I would much rather have the 2016, which is a much better handling car, and it's quicker in a straight line, and it's better looking, and it's better in pretty much every single way. So, yeah, go for that one. And finally today, well, we're going to round it off with the 1969 Datsun 2000 Roadster. 135 horsepower, 132 foot-pound torque, 2,135 pounds of weight. This is the lightest car here today. This one's actually pretty interesting. Those statistics are actually quite good uh, for a car from the 60s. Yeah, th those are really solid statistics actually. Usually cars that are making that much sort of power uh, end up weighing a lot more, but this one could be a pretty good car. I know absolutely nothing about the Datsun 2000 Roadster. This is the only game I'm aware it's ever been in. It might have been in Gran Turismo at some point because it's a Japanese car, but yeah, honestly, I don't remember it if it was it kind of looks like a Triumph Herald. I guess that's the best sort of way to explain it. it. It definitely has some British influences in the way it looks. It also has a weird sort of hood scoop on it, which is strange. Yeah, the 2000 Roadster, a weird car to look at. As far as it goes to drive, it is decent. It, it's nothing special. You know, the statistics really do cash a check that it can't quite get in because it, it's just not as good as statistics would say. You know, you'd think 135 horsepower would be a lot quicker than it is, and it really isn't. Uh, you know, the same amount of torque, you'd think that would also contribute to the quickness, and yeah, it's just not quick. Handling, it's okay. It's nothing spectacular, though. Uh, as far as sort of these older Nissan Natsons, whatever you want to call them, I would probably say go for the 240Z, aka the Fur Lady Z. It's just a little bit more of a well-rounded car. Uh, to be perfectly honest, the 2000 isn't bad, and there's certainly some stuff you could probably do to this thing upgrade that would make it a little bit better, but just as far as it goes stock, just not particularly great, unfortunately. On to the leaderboard and the fastest car today, unsurprisingly, in 79th place is the Shelby GT500 with 122.686, which is actually really respectable. Uh, beats out an NSX, TTS, beats out a uh, Mustang SVT Cobra R, which is pretty good. It does lose out slightly to an Cadillac ATS-V, though. Moving down the board to more, in 113th place we find the Porsche 911 Turbo 3.3 with an impressively good time, a 125.936, it's, it's sort of like that Golf R that we had very recently, that sort of did way better than its PI would suggest. Uh, yeah, that's right up there with some sort of start of B-class, very high C-class cars, and it's only a mid-C-class car itself. In 143rd place we find the Buick GSX with a 128.667, it is slightly quicker than the Subaru BRZ and the Mazda Speed 3. It loses out to a Dodge Neon, which is a little bit embarrassing. It probably could have gone slightly quicker than the Neon, though, given another lap. 
Uh, moving down the board some more, in 157th place, we find the AMC Javelin AMX with 129.558, which is roughly about where you'd expect it to be. Slightly slower than a Dodge Challenger, but it is quicker than a Fox Body Mustang and a 69 Firebird, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, in 181st place, we find the Vauxhall Corsa VXR with 132.042. It is about a second off of its 2016 equivalent, and for good reason, because it's not a very nice car to drive. In 187th place, we find the Honda CRX with a 133.278, slightly beating out a Golf GTI and a Dodge Shelby Omni, which is roughly about where you'd expect that car to be, slightly slower than a Jaguar E-Type. And moving down once again, 213th place goes to the Datsun 2000 Roadster with a 138.903, about a second quicker than the Volvo 1800E, slightly slower than the Mazda Cosmo, which is especially weird considering the Cosmo actually has much worse stats than the 2000 Roadster. And finally today, the poor little Fiat X19 goes into 226th place with 146.797, which is actually not a terrible time. It's about two, uh, three seconds quicker than the Nissan Safari Turbo Diesel, but it does lose out to the AMC Pacer. So not a particularly great time from the car, but not a terrible one, none of the less. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Forza Top Gear Labs. Not quite sure on what next theme is going to be, but join us for it. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, farewell. Oh!